and welcome back to another episode of Star Trucks. In this episode, we will be talking about the Stanton system. The Stanton system is located here inside the UEE with five known jump points. One to Kronos, one to Vega, one to Sol, another to Pelis, and the last to Callus. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the Stanton system. Settlement. Even without the inevitable human intrusion, Stanton would have been an anomaly. Boasting a wide green zone with four habitable super-Earths, the system is, from a cosmological perspective, unusual. Strictly speaking, star systems as purely habitable as Stanton simply don't exist. The combination of the proper star type with the evolution of four especially large human suitable biospheres requiring limited terraforming is so unlikely as to strongly suggest design. Meanwhile, the divergent ecologies on Stanton's four worlds are of significant interest to scientists of all stripes. No one is sure exactly who first settled the Stanton system, all indications are that it was discovered by a free agent trader and that word of the location of its potential riches spread slowly on the electronic grapevine. By the time the UEE noticed the system's existence, all four planets had populations numbering in the tens of thousands. The notice spelled their doom. A quartet of super-Earths are an extremely rare find, and the Empire quickly declared Stanton to be a case of eminent domain, citing a need to protect and extend nearby jump lanes. Without formal colonization papers on file, the existing inhabitants had little choice. Prospectors, survivalists, and other squatters have little means to protect themselves from the might of a Bengal-class carrier. The Empire then stymied, as is often the case. Wanting was a great deal more interesting than having. With a down economy in the midst of a hundred-year colonization drought, the UEE had few options for actually exploiting Stanton. UEE naval engineers conducted a small amount of required terraforming. A series of underfunded military outposts were established, and then Stanton sat unwatched for another generation. The decision was ultimately made to sell the system piecemeal to the highest bidders. Mega corporations were quietly contacted and asked to bid for their own planets. The winners are believed to have flushed trillions into the UEE economy. Microtech, Hurston Dynamics, Arccor, and Crusader Industries. In a remarkable lack of originality, the four worlds are now named Microtech, Hurston, Arccor, and Crusader. The mega corporations moved in slowly but surely. Initially refusing to displace the existing inhabitants of the system, technically, they bought the land and not the people or anything already constructed there over the years. However, the system has become fully corporatized and the initial settlers have been often literally driven underground. The super earths are now dotted with factories, corporate headquarters, testing ranges, mining facilities, and other company facilities. Only those working for the corporations come to live in Stanton's system, inhabiting orderly company towns. Today, Stanton is a great place to travel if you're interested in the materials produced by several of the galaxy's most successful corporations, or if you think you can make a profit shipping these companies the goods they need to keep working. Stanton 1, Microtech. Stanton 1, 
home of the Microtech Corporation, is a large and generally cold planet. The temperature is the result of an error during the UEE terraforming process, which led to unusually dense cloud production. Microtech produces Mobi glass here, a now standard piece of digital assistive technology used by nearly anyone traveling off world. Although Mobi glass has become ubiquitous, Microtech specializes in all forms of electronics, including those found in ship systems. This would be a good place to start looking for advanced sensor technology, which could provide an edge while dogfighting. Space on the world is leased to smaller companies, including some of Microtech's competitors, probably because it allows the corporation to keep a close eye on them. Buyouts among successful Stanton One based startups are common. Visitors are advised to seek work and cargo news at Wally's Bar. Just don't ask for Wally. Stanton Two, Hurston. Stanton Two is home to Hurston Dynamics, an aristocratic family run weapons manufacturing concern which has bled the world dry. Stanton Two's ecosphere has been largely destroyed, with most all indigenous life killed by the mining and manufacturing processes here. Hurston builds several lines of reliable weapons, and pilots looking for specialized guns might do well to visit here. The planet also produces a variety of munitions, which are sold to other companies, and transport assistance is always well compensated. Workers are imported for year-long factory or mining contracts. Few choose to re-up. Stanton is always in need of cheap labor and is a good source for traders looking to move antimatter precursors. Stanton 3. ArcCore. ArcCore, Stanton 3, is the most visually impressive of the worlds today. While the other planets, even polluted Hurston Dynamics, retain some indication of their natural origins, ArcCore is now an entirely constructed world. All of the terrain has been sculpted, zoned, and built upon, leaving nothing for nature. ArcCore builds fusion engines in bulk using the underground resources on Stanton 3 to provide engines for hundreds of thousands of civilian spacecraft every year. Traders porting at ArcCore are advised that in addition to deals on weapons, they can find just about anything else here. ArcCore is absolutely indiscriminate about who they lease property to, and hundreds of other smaller companies have made their home near the world's North Polar region. Anthropologists familiar with the Xi'an have posted that ArcCore is the closest human equivalent to a Xi'an factory world, and many have drawn the conclusion that our civilization will someday evolve along the same lines. Stanton IV, Crusader. Stanton IV is Crusader, called CL by the natives. It is an unusual world, formed midway between a Teteric world and a gas giant. Crusader's small rocky core is enshrouded in an especially deep, low-density atmosphere. Initial UEE terraforming efforts failed to allow unfettered habitation of the planet itself but rendered the atmosphere breathable at high altitudes. The planet then became home to a military constructed latticework of habitable floating platforms. Since expanding exponentially to suit the needs of Crusader industries, the situation is unusual, but ideal for Crusader, which makes large scale commercial transport ships which would otherwise need to be built beyond the atmosphere. Being built in open air allows the cost of these ships to be reduced by almost 40% on the back end, which is often passed along to consumers.
The company also provides quality housing for their employees, both in planet-side domes and in habitats woven into the latticework. And the portion of the world available to visitors is usually considered the nicest port in the system. The shipyards themselves are eerily beautiful, with huge transport ships suspended in mid-atmosphere surrounded by a lightly webbing of Crusader facilities. Travel warning. Visitors should note that while the standard United Empire of Earth penal code technically applies to the Stanton system, the UEE does not police the region. Private squadrons and hired mercenaries belonging to the inhabiting super corporations enforce their own laws here. Merchant deals. Microtech. Buy electronics, sell hydrogen. Arc Core, buy fusion engines and mining equipment. Sell refined base metals, copper, iron, tungsten. Hurston, buy antimatter, buy explosives. Sell labor. Crusader, buy weapons and sell starship subsystems. And from another source, Stanton, Ownership, UEE, Planets, 4. Planetary Rotations, Microtech, 350 Standard Earth Days. Hurston Dynamics, 588. Arc Core, 730. Crusader Industries, 1,554 Standard Earth Days. Import Raw Materials and Manpower. Export Weapons, Electronics, Computer Tech. Crime Status, Low. Black Market, None. The Stanton system is a corporate business park with large a series of four massive super-Earth planets terraformed for their resources. Though built by the UEE proper, they have since been sold off to the highest bidder supporting construction of the synth world. Some of the largest corporations in the galaxy purchased rights to the worlds at a cost of trillions of galactic credits. Despite the ridiculous corporate names, the transfer of the super-Earths was initially largely ceremonial. The population of Microtech did not suddenly belong to the corporation, and each world had its own dynamic economy. Since that time, however, the corporations have begun consolidating power and generally moving to bleed the planets dry. The planets do act as a corporate headquarters for the companies in question and they are home to wholesale production facilities where an eager merchant might find a good deal. Microtech produces electronics, including handheld sensors and computer software upgrades for starships. Hurston Dynamics is a serious weapons provider for the civilian market. ArcCore builds fusion engines, and Crusader Industries constructs and operates slow boat colonies. And that was the Stanton system. Thank you for coming out and checking out this episode of Star Charts. And be sure to check out our other episodes. And we'll see you in the verse.